I remember waking up in the morning and this has never happened to me. I was like seven hours after I fell asleep, I woke up before my alarm rang. I always had to sleep 10 hours, maybe even 12 hours. <laughs> it was a lot. I yeah, I mean, I was a teenager too. I'm only 25 now. So it was just, I was kind of a teenager. If I look back as a teenager, you need more sleep. But gosh, I was sleeping a lot. <laughs> and so I, I woke up on that day, on the third day of ketosis. And I was so awake, so alert, so happy. And I remember my husband sleeping next to me. And I just woke him up and I was like, Elias, I'm so something changed <laughs> something got better i just felt so much better with my whole being and it just continued getting better and better and milana how did you find carnival well it's really been like a rocky road for me it didn't like i didn't just find it it actually started um like around five years ago when i heard or maybe even six or seven years ago when i heard jordan peterson talk on Joe Rogan. Um, I was like a big fan of him and was watching him quite often. And and he got re me really interested in this whole carnivore thing because he helped me through a lot of other things. Um, but I didn't really start carnivore until just a year ago. So I've been kind of like dabbling with meat. <laughs> I've been eating meat here and there and then other people were trying to convince me that, um, well, vegetables are healthy and maybe you should go vegan or vegetarian and uh, all that. So I was kind of going back and forth. And I even actually attempted carnivore back then when I heard Jordan Peterson talk about it for like maybe two weeks or so. And I lost, or maybe even like a month or two. And I lost a lot of weight, which was not a good thing for me. I was, uh, I became underweight basically because I just didn't eat any fat. Like I just ate some minced meat and that was just not enough to sustain me. <laughs> and then I still had a really hard time letting go of sugar. It was so hard. I was really sugar addicted. And um, about two years ago, my husband, he read a book from Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Body. And we started playing around with lower carbs, low carbs, like beans and stuff. And for him, it was important because he wanted to lose weight and build strength and go to the gym. And for me, it was, I think the main reason why it was appealing to me was because the sugar addiction. I really wanted to stop being dependent on sweets and uh, binging on the ice cream in the evenings. And, and I couldn't. Like, slow carb, low carb, it didn't work. I was still addicted to sugar. On the weekend, I would still go back to eating so much sugar. Um, but then I heard Chris Palmer talk with Andrew Huberman about ketogenic diet curing schizophrenia and bipolar and many other <laughs> mental disorders. And my family, we have a history of mental disorders. Um, so my dad has schizophrenia and um, I don't have contact with him, so I don't know much about his life and so on, but I have been afraid that I would get it too. And I have been noticing some some worrisome symptoms so when i when i was um listening to andrew huberman it was mostly like oh how do you get your sleep in order how do you exercise better and then i saw this um this diet for mental health headline and i thought immediately oh that's for me too <laughs> i could improve my life with uh, mental health and diet and so on and so when i heard chris palmer tell his story it touched me so deeply and I was so on board immediately. And when he started explaining the whole uh, biology part of it, how the cells work and the brain and how we can regulate that, I was 
yeah, I was uh, I was completely on board. So we were already doing low carb. It was really difficult because I was having cravings. And then I heard about keto and about uh, like I started to watch some videos on how exactly do you do keto and found um, I don't remember his first name, but Finney, he he does Verda Health and diabetes trials and so on. And he was explaining in very detail how to do it, to focus on animal fats, to um, eat basically unlimited vegetables, but low carb and and eat as much meat basically as you want and stay away from carbs. And uh, And how do you approach this nutritional ketosis? How do you enter it and how do you measure? I've been measuring ketosis now for (laughs) about a year and a half or two uh, with like peace trips and so I know that I'm in ketosis basically every day it's been really important for me and I notice when I'm not in ketosis that my some of my depression comes back some of my other symptoms like fixations on things and paranoia and such come back and so I really notice that ketosis is the important thing for me and so I was playing around with keto and I think after three days in ketosis, I remember waking up in the morning and this has never happened to me. I was like seven hours after I fell asleep, I woke up before my alarm rang. I always had to sleep 10 hours, maybe even 12 hours. <laughs> it was a lot. I Yeah, I mean, I was a teenager too. I'm only 25 now. So it was just, I was kind of a teenager if I look back. As a teenager, you need more sleep, but gosh, I was sleeping a lot. <laughs> and so I I woke up on that day, on the third day of ketosis, and I was so awake, so alert, so happy. And I remember my husband sleeping next to me, and I just woke him up, and I was like, Elias, I'm so... Something changed. <laughs> Something got better. I just felt so much better with my whole being. And it just continued getting better and better. And and. I usually had like periods of depression and periods of like kind of feeling normal. And now for weeks, I don't experience any depression and nothing, no worry, worrying thoughts, no, yeah, no obsessions, nothing. And I'm feeling so normal. And that was just crazy to me. So yeah, so I continued with keto for about three months and then had a cheat day because it was my birthday and immediately noticed, okay, that doesn't work. I can't eat pancakes and all that sugar and such. So I really need to stay keto. I immediately got like sleepy and tired and kind of depressed and very moody. And and my knees started hurting. Like I didn't even notice before that my knees were hurting. <laughs> but now that I think back, they were always kind of hurting. I was always going up the stairs thinking, oh, I guess I just you know, got tired from walking up the stairs. Um, But yeah, they just started hurting when I started eating other things. And so it took about a few days to recover from that cheat day. Um, And and after that, I, I feel like I doubled down on keto. I started to go really deep into okay what is the best thing for your body and for some some reason i thought vegetables were the best thing for your body so i started making smoothies with spinach and kale and those awful green things (laughs) and i started making broccoli patties uh, for dinner instead of some meat i I I really doubled down on the vegetables and the fiber and uh, all the good things in the vegetables, all the vitamins and all that. And I really, really fucked myself up. My gut rebelled. It was awful. And I was thinking to myself, this is healthy. I should eat more of this. And my stomach was saying, no, stop it. You're killing me. And so... In the nights, I would have a lot of bloating and I would wake up from the bloat and the pain and the, the like almost like a, like a child having colic or something where they're like, yeah. Um, 
so all of that was really bad and that's kind of when i was also posting a lot in a keto facebook group that i was in and so i i was making all these different like recipes with nuts and and vegetables and stuff and i was posting pictures of it and i was like i'm so healthy and then this this one guy who was carnivore he wrote under one of my posts where i was writing about fiber he said you don't need fiber it's not a requirement you you can survive with zero fiber in your diet and i thought you're crazy that's not true that it cannot be possibly true you need fiber you won't go to the bathroom if you don't have fiber <laughs> and um i think another month or two passed and i was trying things and I mean, at some point, you, you just get lazy. You're just trying to be healthy, but you're like, oh, it's not really working. And I just got lazy. And so I wasn't, I wasn't making my burgers out of broccoli anymore. And, um, and I would start noticing my, my go-to, my like comfort food plus easy thing to do in the mornings was scrambled egg. And scrambled egg, egg has zero fiber. And, and, I would eat that sometimes every day and sometimes I would eat scrambled egg for breakfast and then I would be so lazy I would just make it again for lunch and I would start noticing how my stomach feels better on the days when I was eating just scrambled egg which is like 100% carnivore <laughs> and no fiber at all and I was thinking to myself like I was uh, tracking in an app like how much fiber I have how much macros and stuff uh, and I was thinking to myself, I had zero fiber, but I'm, I'm feeling better. That's weird. Like, why I should be having more fiber? And so I try to include something. I would have like a salad next to my scrambled egg, which was disgusting. It was like just green leaves with some olive oil or something, and I didn't like it. And I was like pushing it into myself, and uh, and it wouldn't make me feel good. It would make me feel opposite. It would make me feel horrible. And so I was also starting at the same time. I was still watching a lot of keto content on YouTube. And for some reason, I don't know why, but Lily Kane shorts, her shorts popped up in my, in my feed. So I saw all of this carnivore talk, all of this. I just eat meat for breakfast and I put tallow on my skin. <laughs> and I... I was saying to my husband, maybe I should try this. Maybe I should try a carnivore. And I think I was saying that for a few weeks. And every time I would say it, he was like, yeah, do it. The, the burgers, like the broccoli burgers. <laughs> I call them burgers, but they're really not burgers. <laughs> the broccoli patties, they were making you feel really horrible. And you would wake me up in the night because you were like crying. like, and And I'd be like, no, I can't. That's not good for you. <laughs> Even though... Now that I think about it, like I knew about Jordan Peterson, I knew that he was doing carnivore and I was tempted to do it because of the benefits that he's described. And yet, and yet I so felt brainwashed by the whole vegetables are good for you. And there are so many different, I read Gundry's book where he talked about lectins being bad for you. So beans and such being bad for you. And then he makes a point in the end, but other vegetables are good for you. And so here are all these, uh, all these different vegetable meals you can make. And now that I think about it, it's completely insane. You can't like just take one vegetable, say it's bad, or like one type of vegetable, like nightshades and beans and such, say it's bad, and then say all the other ones are good. That just doesn't make sense the way. But anyways, um. Yeah, so I experimented in the end with carnivore. I started around somewhere in May last year. And um, I mean, I only did it for two weeks, but I, it was something that I was living with, like an allergy kind of uh, state since I was 12. Um, I had like, a weird feeling in my throat that I was like choking uh, and 
it wasn't all the time, but most of the time. It was like just like choking. Uh and I have asthma and such, so I was always I always thought that was just the asthma part. And then I had I had like weird uh itch behind my ear where it was like also like an allergy kind of thing. And I thought like, well, I'm just like compulsive or something. I, I just like I just itch there and that's why I do it. And um and I couldn't stop sometimes. It was itch so much like my husband had to literally take my arm <laughs> away from me so I wouldn't itch myself because I would like itch so much that it would like it wouldn't bleed but it would like get red and stuff. And I went carnivore for those two weeks and all those symptoms just disappeared. Like they're not completely gone. I still get sometimes and now I know it's from histamines. I still get a little bit like constructed airway and a little bit of itch if I eat like smoked meat or if I eat like very aged meat but it's basically gone like before I couldn't go a few hours without itching now I can go days without itching and it's <laughs> I mean to explain to someone like oh I, I don't itch here like it's it's not a big deal but it really was a big deal uh it was really distracting me from my life kind of and uh making me feel out of control just like the sugar was feeling making me feel so out of control and like yeah so yeah and after two weeks of my experiment i tried to reintroduce some foods and <laughs> it was a disaster <laughs> i just tried to eat some i didn't try to eat sugar or anything i tried to eat some um cauliflower rice with some creamy chicken like chicken in a cream sauce and i take a bite of this food and literally within seconds my ear starts to itch and i feel like my like airway is being constructed and i immediately feel like there's this like anxiety attack coming over me and uh yeah and i think the next day or so it was like one of the one of the really bad days that like for a long time like i was so anxious and so my body was just like protesting it was really bad and um yeah so that's basically how how i found carnivore how i started carnivore eventually <laughs> So, so that experience with the itching instantly coming back, is that what convinced you, okay, no, I'm just sticking with the carnival? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I, I had other problems like, uh, for example, the whole like bloating and like not being able to go to the bathroom with all the fiber and stuff. And it's like very painful to go to the bathroom as well. And so that was also like uh, getting like getting a relief from that like not having bloating for so long and stuff and uh did get diarrhea for a long time on carnivore so that was i mean in a way i was welcoming it because i have been constipated for so long um uh, but but yeah that's that that was a thing that Joe Rogan warned you about, and <laughs> it happened. And for me, it wasn't just two weeks. I think it was. I think it was months. It took months for it to correct itself. So I went from being constipated for years and going back and forth. From like, I even once went to emergency room because I thought something was so wrong. I was. Uh, I didn't think that I was constipated, but I was. And and they. And they sent me off with uh, some laxatives, like a, a pill, or not a pill, but drops of laxatives, and didn't say anything about diet, nothing at all. And um, now I know that it was from from the dairy, basically. I think I think the fiber doesn't help with it, but the dairy, <laughs> dairy is what constipates me a lot. Um, not sure exactly what it is in the dairy because I've tried um lactose free and it doesn't work either and stuff but it's definitely the dairy and then the fiber just adds bulk to it all so it like really really hurts and um so yeah i started carnivore and that completely 
completely just resolved itself but instead i had <laughs> instead i had all that diarrhea but now i know that it was also from histamines mostly like eating i can't really have anything like barbecued or smoked or or like aged like if i buy meat that's like vacuum sealed and it has been on the shelf for a month i can't eat that i will immediately start my nose is runny and my ears start to itch in the evening usually not immediately because the histamines build up throughout the day and then i get diarrhea usually the next day or so and so oh. And so, yeah, now I have that completely under control because I just buy fresh meat and uh, don't. I have been trying to eat my husband. He found a really nice barbecue place here and he really likes it. And I really liked it, too. But I, I every time I try it, I get symptoms. And so it's just not worth it for me. So, um, uh, like, how are you? How are you preparing? If you can't, if you can't barbecue the food, how are you preparing? Are you just frying it, or I yeah, I fry it in a cast iron. Or right now we live in a place where it's um, we don't have a very well ventilated kitchen, so I make most of it in the air fryer, or we make uh, chuck roast in the oven, and so that's how we make food. <laughs> nice um well congratulations on finding it and on your upcoming carniversary yeah um, <laughs> so <laughs> what other improvements have you seen like outside of the di digestion like the the depression and stuff has just stayed away for the last year yeah depression has stayed away completely and i've actually kicked myself out of ketosis uh a few times during my carnivore um journey but i've been fasting a lot and um i i did a seven day uh, water fast and it was a bit too much for my body and so during the last uh, day or two i got really really strong cravings for for sweet stuff and um and uh when i went back to carnivore i started eating uh like meat and uh, eggs and such and the cravings just wouldn't go away so i bought myself some uh kefir which uh, doesn't have a lot of sugar but still has some lactose in it and so i i drank liters of it and kicked myself out of ketosis which i could measure with the pea strips and i could see on like second or third day some of my depression coming back and some of my like obsessive thoughts that i that i tried to like not indulge but they they came back and i couldn't kind of like shove them away and i was immediately like okay this is I'm, I'm out of ketosis i know that for sure and this is all coming back so it's it's not the carnivore it's the ketosis it's really important for me so since then i've been like keeping track of uh of my sugar intake i've tried honey recently as well which uh i was um uh, here's the thing that i feel like everyone's talking about carnivore in this like grandiose way of like it will heal everything and you will be a superhuman but no i was uh i was sick for a few days my husband he brought the virus from one of his trips um and he got me sick too and so after a day or two, I was really craving, I was craving milk for some reason. I don't like milk. I like kefir, but I don't like milk. Um, and we didn't have any milk. And I know that dairy gives me bad stomach pains and stuff. And so I was like, all right, I guess I, I won't indulge in my craving. And I opened the cabinet to make myself some electrolytes and I saw honey and I was like, well, that's kind of similar. Let me try the honey. And I know it's good for your throat. And I was sick and my throat was hurting. And so I tried some honey and it has a lot of sugar, uh, <laughs> obviously. Um, and I had, I think, about 20 grams. And so I was thinking like, oh, it might kick me out of ketosis because I'm eating quite a lot of protein and stuff. And, and it didn't actually. And it didn't give me any other symptoms. So 
I guess honey's fine, <laughs> at least for me, thankfully. So I'm very happy. I have this other thing that I uh, can introduce into my diet. But I also noticed, which was very, very liberating, that it's a sweet thing and you might crave it and such. But I had, um, I had it in some hot water. I added about a spoon and I drank about half a cup. And at some point I was like, I don't want anymore. It's kind of starting to taste like not nice. Um, and so I just uh, poured it out, just got rid of it because I just didn't want it and couldn't give it to my husband because he was busy with something. And um, that was a nice feeling to have because with sugar, usually there is no, that's enough. I had enough, it stops tasting good. But with honey, there was a thing like that. I just and I had it uh, just the other day just to try again and I had a few sips and I was like no I'm really not feeling it today. <laughs> I really That's don't. interesting. That's really interesting cuz usually yeah I mean as a as a former sugar addict myself I mean it's I, Exactly. It's yeah. It's hard to have an off switch, right? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, my husband he can't stop with honey. I bought uh, a whole jar recently and he's almost halfway through the jar. It's just been a few days. <laughs> so, so, so is he still technically carnivore or? Well, he he's carnivore for the most of most part, but whenever he eats out, which happens quite frequently for him because he travels for, for work, um, a little bit back and forth uh he goes out with people and he doesn't want to be a bother so he doesn't he doesn't eat he tries to avoid all the carbs but he mostly eats keto when he's out and about but at home he he eats carnivore and recently he added spices back in like paprika spice and i think some garlic and pepper and such and he just told me yesterday that maybe I should cut back because I've been feeling worse from that. And so he's he's just watching how he feels and he feels best when he eats meat because he also gets bloated and such when he eats uh, vegetables. And uh, for him, it's been very important because like controlling the weight and he is, he's also really struggling with the cravings and and so carnivore has given him that freedom to to not buy the gummy bears and then finish the whole pack alone and then hide it from me because <laughs> yeah he's been struggling with that mm. um so on a day-to-day -day basis how are you eating now um well we have a few foods that we rotate kind of so if you if you um um meals or whatever you call it um we eat mostly burgers because that's cheap so we buy uh freshly grounded meat um at the grocery store next door they grind it like almost every other day or so so we can buy it on the day they do it and we make burgers and then i usually have some eggs on the side and so does he and we don't eat so much together because uh, we just have like kind of different schedules. And so we, it's funny how we, <laughs> before we always cook together and nowadays we kind of do it separately because you just pull out the air fryer, you put your burgers in, you put it in and <laughs> there you go, your meal <laughs> kind of. Um, and we eat, um, I feel like we we like we we take a meal like burgers with eggs and we eat for like a whole month just burgers and eggs and then the next month or so or like however much time it takes for us to get tired of that meal uh we just switch to something else like before we were eating a lot of uh, lamb meatballs that we would also make in the air fryer uh lately we've been still eating a little bit of burgers but starting to lean towards just eating chuck roast in the oven uh so we we fry it up first and then put it in the in a cast iron like pot big pot and then uh, with the lid and then we put it in the oven and then when it's done we just shred it to be like a pulled beef and then we 
just put uh, all of it into the fridge. And so it just like stands around and whenever you're hungry, just pull some out, put it on the pan and like fry it up again. And it like, it's just, like very crunchy um, outside and yeah, it's delicious. And so we've been eating that lately. And then we have some steaks sometimes. And uh, I think I eat like maybe two, three times a day. I just eat when I'm hungry. Like I wake up in the morning. Like today I woke up, I was not hungry. And so I haven't had any food yet. Most of the time, I think I eat around like 12 or 13 and then again around six. And then if I have a very busy day and I run around a lot, um, especially with the dog, uh, if we run around a lot, I come home and eat some more. So it's like two, three times a day. And he eats, he eats like also two, three times a day. I think he's more like on the one, two side and a bit more OMAD. Um, I just can't eat so much in one go. <laughs> and I'm also a little bit still afraid of the whole like, oh, maybe the protein might kick you out of ketosis. Um, but um, haven't seen it. Yeah. And just just to clarify on the ketosis, um, so a lot of people, uh, myself included, we tend not to worry about whether we're in ketosis or not, but it's very important to you because of the yeah. mental health aspect to it, right? Yeah, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe in a year or two, it will be easier because, as far as I understand, like ketosis heals your brain and fixes. I wouldn't say fixes, but like improves your metabolism. Um, and so maybe in a year or two, it won't be as important, but right now it really is. I really notice when I'm not in ketosis. Mm. So um, on, a, on a different topic, um, where are you living at the moment? What city are you in? Uh, Sweden, Uppsala. It's uh, just uh, an hour from Stockholm. Ah, okay. And is that a big city or is that quite small? Yeah, it's quite large. It's a uh, it's a student city, so it's uh, it's quite large, but it's not um, it's not very busy. Um, and how easy it is that there to kind of go out and to a restaurant or something and just get a steak or it's um, it's okay. We have one particular steakhouse that we have been at twice. It's a bit pricey, and we're still kind of like in a student budget so we haven't been going there many times but um the two times that we did go they were very accommodative and i asked them to just fry my meat and like uh, tallow nothing else don't put any herbs and stuff and they did that and it was delicious and and then they had a charcuterie kind of board and i they usually put like olive oil and everything on it and i was like no i just want the meat and uh actually the um, the waiter he was like are you carnivore and we were like yeah yeah we are <laughs> yeah word is getting around wow yeah <laughs> yeah yes so they were very accommodated mm, nice um so for you do you see this as a permanent lifestyle for me i think so but i am i am like excited to reintroduce things like i was very excited when i saw that um honey worked i i think i will definitely i was thinking about this like if i ever have kids i will never say eat your vegetables first or something like that i will always feel like finish your meat <laughs> That's the thing you should really eat. And then everything else is like kind of a bonus, like a fun thing to do. So I don't want to be dogmatic and say I'm never going to eat any vegetables or anything in the future again. But I definitely can see that meat is the important food. That's what we should really eat. That's, yeah. And, um, I don't have a problem with that. Since I was a kid, I my mom would make these um, Russian uh, soups, uh, but like meat as a base. 
And I would always pick out the meat first. I would sit there with my spoon and pick out the meat first. And then the rest was like, yeah, I can finish that because I'm hungry. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so um, have you had anyone around you kind of say, what? what's this kind of diet you're doing? That's a bit strange or anyone show any interest? Well, I actually met another carnivore at work, um, which was quite, quite interesting. And it was funny how our conversation started. Um, uh, he was like, oh, so I heard from someone else that you were also doing this uh, primal diet. And I was like, yeah, I'm also doing carnivore. And he was like, so do you have coffee? Do you drink alcohol? And what about this? <laughs> started interrogating me just to see like what my level of carnivore was exactly <laughs> and then we just shared tips and like oh these are like electrolytes you can get cheap and all that and so yeah but otherwise like uh, some of my colleagues they they um we had it was easter recently and so we had a lot of sugar like a lot of candy laying around and uh, i entered one of the rooms and one of my colleagues was like but you're not uh, I said something, I think there's so much sugar around and she was like, oh, but you're not going to have any, are you? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> and so it's a little bit of a, yeah, it's uh, something that people laugh about. And I think most people that I tell that they eat carnivore, it's either one of the two questions, like, don't you need fiber? And, but isn't it boring? And the third one is, but isn't it expensive? And no, I don't need fiber. And no, it's not boring to eat sometimes steak for breakfast or burgers for breakfast. It's amazing. And no, I've actually like reduced my costs. Like we pay way less for groceries nowadays because we don't buy all the like ice cream, like all the extras, like all the snacks and stuff. And we don't like our compost bin is empty. It's only eggshells and paper in there. And so like, we don't we don't uh, spend more money we actually spend less that's awesome um so um if you were giving advice to someone let's say someone at, at your office says to you look i, I want to give this a try you know for a month or so just to see how i go um what advice would you give them for getting started well i think for for most people, it would be enough to start with keto. I think the reason why I struggled with carnivore when I learned about it from Jordan Peterson was that I didn't understand ketosis. So I think my advice would be first understand ketosis. First understand how your body metabolizes energy and what you need to eat to get energy and what you need to eat to restore your tissue. So you need to eat either fats or carbs for energy and you need to eat protein to restore your tissue to maintain the function uh, and so i would i would say start with finding out what that is and that's what i think most people that um that i talk to i i say carnivore that's something like like a little bit extreme i understand um but keto, like that, that works for most people. And here's the research here. Look at Chris Palmer, what he's doing with brain energy and look at all this research about mental health and such um, that just came out. And so look at keto, like look at how it works and then just watch your body, like how it feels uh, when you eat certain foods, because you might eat, like I eat butter and I don't feel great. Like I, I skip the butter nowadays and I just eat a tallow and meat. And so maybe butter will feel fine for you, but for me it wasn't. And so watch yourself, watch what you are capable of handling. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.